Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you're new here, I'm Tony and this is TC's Outdoors. Uh, today we're going to do some gardening, so thanks for coming along. Um, behind me you see the garden's uh, kind of booming. I've, uh, I was late to the game. If you guys saw my uh, when I planted the garden earlier in the spring, or it was kind of late in the spring actually, but I'll throw a link uh, right here, actually over there it'll be. So uh, we planted the garden and I hadn't had a garden in three years during the, the process of moving and building the house and everything and uh, gardening is definitely something I enjoy doing. So um, this is kind of a, a long time coming. I'm happy to have it. So you see the cucumbers growing up the trellis. They're cranking. They're doing really well. I think they're pretty happy. The, the one on the, the ends are about five foot tall. Um, we've picked probably five, between five to eight, something like that cucumbers already. So. Uh, it's uh, pretty good. We've finally, finally got uh, some tomatoes. So you see here, this is my tomato section. I've got Supersonics and uh, these are early girls on this side. But I've got the first couple turning red. So pretty exciting stuff. Today is July 27th, I think. Something like that. So uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys see down in there. See all the mushrooms popping up in here? So I use mushroom compost. Um, for the, the soil base and I would assume there was definitely some spores left in it because I've got mushrooms in all the beds I don't know what kind of mushrooms they are I'm just kind of letting them grow I'm assuming they're probably edible but uh, that's not my thing so um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Florida weave or not but um, that's how I've been supporting my tomatoes for the last few years it's worked out really well uh, the cages always seem to fall over late in the year so um, really the the hardest part about the Florida weave is picking off the suckers as they pop in. So if you see right here, um, you've got your main stem and you've got your leaves out here. This here is just a sucker, so that's going to want to try to form its own plant. So I just come in here as they pop in, just pinch them off, throw them off to the side, and that keeps the plant uh, light enough. It doesn't need all that extra foliage and it, it uh, keeps it going up. And then uh, every... Uh, maybe week some depends on the weather, but I've been coming out here and you see here. I've got so it's about four inches in between um, The levels and just run it's just hemp twine that I run and I I weave kind of On one side of the plant and the other side another side and then around the posts and all the way down and come back and as I go down I uh, I'm on the opposite side so the one plants helps support the opposite plant and with the strength of the posts nothing falls over keeps everything up off the ground keeps it all healthy um, I haven't sprayed any kind of fungicide or anything I don't know it doesn't even look like I've had any signs of blight or anything so hopefully everything stays nice and healthy for me and we'll be able to pick all these tomatoes and um, I'll do some canning probably hopefully uh, make some salsa make some some sauce maybe and uh, maybe I'll bring you guys along for that too if you're interested so as far as if you haven't seen when I planted the video you should go back because uh, I planted a bunch of stuff from seed and the seeds I used had been in the freezer for uh, three years I think either two and two years or three years I'm not exactly sure but either way um, I had some pretty successful germination um, these are my zucchini and squash plants that I planted from uh, these these came from seed and I only had one one mound that didn't germinate over here in the corner so uh, that's pretty awesome and then uh what else the pumpkins didn't do too well but the pumpkins the seeds the these were like the dollar store seeds and um i wasn't really too optimistic on that this pumpkin plant here is doing great and then another one did just pop up right there so that's more than enough pumpkins for us um i'll i'll give them away if i can to my nieces and nephews and then uh what we have left we'll feed to the chickens it's a natural dewormer so helps keep them healthy and it's a little little food for them so saves on the budget so uh let's see well the real reason we're out here though is these monsters here over my shoulder that's my cherry tomatoes uh, i didn't support them when i put them in i didn't have any tomato cages normally that's kind of what i would do but i wasn't sure how i wanted to do it they don't get real heavy and the tomato cages are kind of a they always seem to fall over on me towards the end of the year so this year i'm going to try um i bought some fiberglass posts and uh, i'm going to drive them in the ground and just tie the tomato plants to them and see how that goes so i thought i'd bring you along for that so i'll get you guys set up on the tripod and get my materials situated and we'll go from there actually first we're going to go over to the chickens because 
for any of you guys that are involved in the channel for any length of time know that we have chickens if you're new here thanks for stopping in um, if you uh, enjoy gardening firewood tractors or uh, homesteading ish I'm not like full out full-fledged homesteading we have chickens I would like to get some pigs maybe in the future and uh, on down the road but I've raised rabbits for meat before I plan on getting into that again but uh, we hatched some chicks so I will throw a link to that video uh, right here not super popular but I think if you guys take a look you'll enjoy it so we ended up uh, we had a broody hen long story short uh, we hatched out some chicks I've had a couple updates along the way but you guys are not gonna believe how big these things have gotten so we uh, successfully got the mama hen out of the coop from the little ones she wanted back into the she started laying again and uh, she wanted to get back out with the rest of the chickens so we made that happen but look at these guys they are enormous it is amazing so I'm thinking maybe another month or so and they'll hopefully be big enough to kind of establish the pecking order without getting too hurt so we'll try getting them in with the rest of the chickens but I don't know what kind they are I think that one there the brown one on top the tan is a rooster he's got or it has a really red comb already and the other ones don't even really have a comb starting so um, but they're some interesting looking chickens for sure that all black one it's hard to see without the sun hitting her feathers but she has got some of like the prettiest colors it's kind of like a, a black onyxy looking when the sun hits the hits her feathers get some really cool purples and kind of greens and blues off of those feathers so once we get them out in the general population I'll do another update so all right that's the chicken so uh, we'll get over to the garden get set up and go from there here we go all right guys so these are the steaks I got they're just uh, fiberglass I think they're four foot tall and uh, I think they'll work perfect for me uh, I got them off Amazon I'll throw a link in the description below so I think the first couple plants will probably be a pain but once I start getting them up off the ground it won't be too bad there's kind of jam on the ground Get a little tap and then I'm just gonna use I've got this hemp twine it's the same stuff that I use to uh, do the Florida weave um, regular tomatoes I'll just cut a few little sections and I'll use that to tie it up a few times up and I'm not gonna tie it super tight just uh, just kind of tight enough to support it that way just so uh, I don't want it to cut into the plant itself but just tight enough to keep it kind of up off the ground so it is it's crazy I don't know how these are gonna cooperate they've been and able to do their thing for a while now but I've also been pruning these guys as the as the season has gone on trying to keep them from getting too many suckers on them too because all it does is take away from the plant they're really not needed for anything unless we're going to let them kind of sprawl out I guess they would probably be beneficial but in this situation they're really not fancy here just gonna tie a little square knot just to hopefully keep the string in place okay. lots of cherry tomatoes starting I hate to come out here and see them start to rot or something else on the ground any of the bugs start getting into them so that's why I wanted to get this stuff done get them tied up That is it. In a couple of days in the sunshine, and they'll start to grow up instead of over. And it'll be a lot easier to kind of keep track of what we got. So I think what I'll do is speed you guys up, and we'll work through this. And uh, we'll be back.
All right, everybody, we got them, uh, got them tied up. Some of these were a lot taller than I thought they were. It was really hard to tell when they were all kind of on the ground, tangled up with one another. To, you know, they didn't, I didn't really know how much they had grown. But I wish I'd have started this maybe a month ago and started tying them up as they grew instead of once they were already so bushy. It was kind of a pain, but uh, next year, I guess. So um, I think this will work out fine, though. They seem strong enough, so uh, I don't really have too many complaints. Uh, we didn't catch the second half of the uh, tying these plants up because the GoPro overheated again. So uh, I had to keep going though. I, I promised my son I'd take him fishing this afternoon. So uh, I wanted to make sure I got this done and out of the way. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to go head down and go fishing. But uh, if you like this kind of stuff, please hit the like and subscribe. Share it with your friends. And until next time, get outdoors. Do something you love.